out of suffering, out of the fiery trials. I know that the world will say, well, if God loves you, then God would replace it. That means he would take suffering away and he'll just give you glory. But the Lord says, oh, no, 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 you will suffer, but I'm going to turn your suffering into glory. So the mature believer knows the life, that life includes postponed pleasure. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Now, this is diametrically opposed to everything that the world teaches. Because the world teaches us, get everything now. So suffering becomes a way to postpone pleasure so that when you come up out of it, you can experience pleasure the proper way. And let me tell you something. We may not have pleasure on this side. But when the roll is called up yonder, I plan to be there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you get what you want all the time, when you want it, you don't enjoy it like when you have to wait and put it up and lay away. Anybody know anything about lay away? Years ago, lay away was popular. Lay away meant that if you don't have the cash, somebody knows what I'm talking about, or credit for it, they let you put some change down. And they would hold it for you in lay away. And then you would pay regular payments until you satisfied the debt. And then you would get it. You want what you put in layaway with a little more pride than what you were able just to pick up off the rack. Because the layaway, you had to wait on it. You had to work for it. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. And so the Lord says, you may be suffering now, but understand layaway. Glory is on the way. You may be suffering now, but this is just postponed pleasure. It's going to come your way, and when it shows up, you'll know what glory is all about. So we pay the price today in order to enjoy the future, which means serving the Lord today will pay off tomorrow. These are privileges we have now. Alphabet A, our suffering means fellowship with Christ. Our suffering means fellowship with whom, everybody? Alphabet B, our suffering means glorying in the future. Our suffering means glorying in the what, everybody? Then, alphabet C. Our suffering brings us the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 14. If ye be reproached. In other words, if you are insulted because of the name of Christ, Lord help us. You can call yourself a whole lot of things, and you can say you're a part of a different types of movements, but nothing upsets folk like, and I've learned this going abroad, nothing upsets folk like when Christ's name is evoked. It not it something that Christ's name, the name of Jesus, is the only name that offends some people? Think about it, y'all. Nobody gets upset when a Muslim prays in public in the name of Muhammad. No Sikh, Hindu, or Baha, nobody gets upset, upset when they pray in unity in the name of their fathers. Nobody even gets upset when they end in the name of our God. But when you mention Jesus Christ, in fact, there are letters that when you get into certain places that say because the environment is ecumenism we would ask you to refrain from invoking the prayer in the name of Christ and the only reason why folk get offended in Christ's name is because you can still find the grave of everybody else somebody got that do I have a witness in this place I'm talking to believers that understand what I'm saying I know that's a little heavy for some of you but you'll get it by the tape you'll get it if you love Jesus, you ought to be testifying for your Savior today. But look at what Peter says. Peter says, if you are insulted, if you be reproached because of the name of Jesus Christ, that is, people mistreat you because of Jesus' name, he says, you are blessed. He says, happy are ye. And here's the phrase in verse 14. For the spirit 
of glory. The Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. God, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of glory. And so the Holy Ghost has a special ministry for those who suffer. That when you suffer, the Holy Ghost has a specialized ministry assigned specifically to him to come and help you in your time of suffering. Let me give you his name. When you read John chapter 14 and John chapter 16, Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to leave you the comforter, which will lead you into all truth. The Greek word for the comforter is the parakletos. Time won't make me go through all this, but let me just say this. Para, where you get parallel from, kaleto, called to. When you combine the two words, parakletos, it forms the idea that the Holy Ghost has been called alongside of us to help us in the moments when we can't help ourselves. So you know those times when you've been going through suffering and you really truly are about to lose your mind. When your heart, anybody's heart ever been broken, you thought beyond being mended? I mean the weight of the world, I'm talking to some believers in the place today. The weight of the world is on your shoulder and it's pushing you down. And you say to people, I don't know what happened, but it was as if I was down, but something picked me up. Well, let me help you today, everybody. It wasn't as if something, it is that someone has literally gotten up under you and lifted you up and said, you can't walk that far, but I've got the power to carry you on through. So God lets us journey in our struggles to the point in which we can no longer handle them. And once we get as far as we can go, the Holy Spirit who's with us, he abides in us. He is called out alongside of us. He says, now I need you to specialize in something now. And he comes and he specializes because he knows we're going through a fiery trial of suffering that is beyond our ability to manage. And so he says, now I need to step in so that I can walk alongside you and I can carry you. And that's what God is trying to let us know today. Hold up right there. Let me walk in front of you right now. Let me handle what is coming your way. And once the way has been cleared, God says, now you come on and you follow me. You remember the story in Acts chapter 7, the story of Stephen. Everybody know about Stephen? Let me hear you say amen. Stephen had, has preached in Acts 7 this wonderful sermon. And the Bible says, Saul of Tarshish is there. Now, Saul is a first-class Jewish scholar. But Stephen's preaching in the name of Jesus. And you know that's a problem. And he insults the people Stephen does because Stephen says, Jesus is risen. You have killed him, but Jesus is alive. So the fellows decide, we're going to kill Stephen. We're going to shut this witness up. And so they throw him in some ditch and they stone him. And Saul of Tarsus, our hero, Paul, the preacher, is holding their coats in his arms, looking at Stephen getting stoned to death. And when Stephen is about to give up the ghost and die, the Bible says in Acts 7, 56, that the heavens open up. Stephen is filled with the Holy Ghost. And when the heavens open up, Jesus stands up. Oh, when Jesus stands up, I wish I had a witness in this place. Understand, don't trial and tribulation come in our life and we think, Lord, when is the end going to be? When Michael Jesus stands up. Get what I'm saying, y'all. Stephen is dying, but heaven opens up. Jesus stands up, which is symbolic of that moment of the assigned specialized ministry of the Holy Ghost. That whatever we go through, Jesus is standing there at the right hand of God watching. But you know what happened a couple of chapters later? The Bible says a couple of chapters later, Saul was riding down the Damascus road. Jesus, I like this, knocked him over and said, hey, 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 I'm the same one that you were persecuting in chapter 7. And I want you to know you can kick, 
You can kick against the pricks, against the goal.